Um, so I'm just going to keep this brief. I want to really just discuss the topic of qualifying your resilient health. So there is um, a lot of pressure on students to achieve academically. And there's also a lot of pressure on students to jump straight into a graduate role. However, COVID-19 um, really, I mean, it's fast tracked the change and the shift of what qualifications are and what they mean. I'm just gonna share my slides with you. There we go, hopefully. Okay, right. So yeah, so just as I was saying, recruiters are now not just looking for qualifications. They are looking for the whole package, the whole person and the character and those resilient traits that can support those businesses and support the work continuously. So as we can see here, in 2019, um, CBI um, with Pearson published um, a report on what they believed, or well, they tried to get a different definition of work ready. Uh, while they couldn't come up with a definition, they did see three consistent themes. So we know that to be successful, you need knowledge. We know that to be successful, you need skills. But what do we define as character? So how do we start? So the best way to start in building a character and building up yourself is to know what your strengths are. So these are six different strengths. And as you can see from the imagery here, what's sitting within those six different strengths is actually, it, it's not formal qualifications. It's not anything that you can learn through theory, but what actually these six strengths are is all based upon and made up through your core character, your core values, your experiences in life, your culture, religious factors, environmental factors, your, your political beliefs. It's what fundamentally makes you up as who you are. So to start building your character, the first tip is to just start to break it down and start to re reflect upon the experiences that you have in everyday life, not just professionally, but personally. So this is an example of a personal SWOT analysis that I came across um, from Millennials Matter. Um, it's just a simple example of a uh, personal SWOT analysis um, that a student um, put together to start embedding a little bit more information and an understanding what she could offer. So this is a very, very simple and easy tool um, to get you started. So think about Think about what your strengths are. Be honest with what your weaknesses are. Um, know what your opportunities are. And then recognize what those threats are. And keep asking yourself these questions. Now, this is a really, really good tool um, that hugely helped me actually from Audrey's book. Um, once I started to think about what my goals were, um, I then started to, um, and obviously once I'd done my SWOT analysis, I then started to fill this, this character sheet in. And this is also what um, a, a tool that Audrey has introduced on her resilience sessions that she runs at Brunei University for the students within uh, arts, business, and social sciences. It's a really, really simple tool to start to break it down. 
it's hugely overwhelming at the moment. We're getting so much conflicting information, um, worrying about coming back to university, uh, just physically online teaching, thinking about all of the different activities, everything, everything that we need to do to tick boxes um, to gain that graduate job or the job of our dreams, should I say. So this is just a really, really simple and easy way to do this. So when I started to do this, I started to put it down, um, put down you know, my unique skills, um, my traits, and then as you can see, my weaknesses, hugely self-critical all of the time. But in starting to write down what I had achieved, it's, it became a little less overwhelming, a little less scary. And the more that I started to recognize what I was good at, um, and I started to build in, not just professionally what I was good at, but also what I do in everyday life, recognizing, you know, the, the people that I communicate with, those networks, those people that really inspire me, and started, I started to look at who those people are, and what made them those people, the people that I inspire to be like, Audrey being one of them. <laughs> as, well, as she is for many, and especially for our students. So before I end, I just want to give a very, very quick kind of reflection of 2019 for me. Um, we went so quickly from classroom teaching, um, from being able to meet face to face and get to know students in order for us to continue to provide sessions for them because that's my area of work very very quickly immediately okay so we had to adapt and do everything virtually online i'm an event manager i'm used to running around and meeting and greeting people get into one room to the next um and 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 that's what i was used to doing at the very beginning I will admit it, it was overwhelming and just trying to very, very quickly go, boom, okay, right, this is an event, it's online, how do I get people to register? Um, having people come in, we all know that you're still on mute, it still happens, I still do it. Um, and I'll admit, it. at the very beginning, I absolutely failed. It did not go according to plan, it was not perfect. I had such, um, you know, such high hopes that it would transfer immediately. But with no time and no planning, of course things are going to go wrong. However, once I got over my initial inner critic, should I say, um, I was able to, to start to really value um, what I was learning, I was then interested in and engaged in learning more about the different platforms and what we could do to the point where now actually my name comes up um, as an expert and I'm recommended uh, to help people um, provide event solutions on different platforms, which is great, absolutely great. Where I was a massive tech foe before, I was terrified of technology because I considered myself to be a people person. Um, which to me was a physical environment of people. I've hugely adapted. And now I'm, now I'm a virtual community person. So it's really, it's, it's flipping the mindset of, of what you knew beforehand and embracing the changes as we, as, as we go forward. We still need a network of people. We still need to be able to have a knowledge um, and those academic qualifications, the theory. But what, we are, but what we really know now is that it's the way that you adapt. It's the way that you see things. It's the way that you take action. It's okay if things go wrong because we aren't perfect. Even technology will go wrong. We are human beings and we just need to care. We, we just need to be a little bit more compassionate as we are with others, with ourselves. So really that's, um, that's, that's where my tips are. Take the action, actually reflect upon, reflect upon 
what is working. Don't, don't allow the, your self-criticism to overwhelm you. And learning is, is continuous. We learn every single day and we always will continue to learn because it never stops. Things will always change. But by embracing that and moving forward with it, we can achieve success and continuously achieve success. So with that, I'm just gonna end on, on my final note that failing is a part of our continuous learning. And it does make us who we are. And who we are is wonderful. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, if I can. There we go.